Let's pay homage to the lineage gurus. Homage to the venerable Meng Liao Ming. Homage to Master Sakya Zheng Kong. Homage to His Holiness the Sixteenth Kamapa. And homage to Master Dukdan Torshi. Homage to the three jewels of the altar. Homage to the main deity of the group practice tonight. The Golden Mother of the Primordial Jade Pond. Sumo. Dancing Kato to Tan City. All Dharma masters, Dharma educators, Dharma teachers, Dharma instructors, Dharma assistants, directors of temples and chapters, all disciples present here and over the internet. How do you do? Good evening. I still. I still. Shall I? Hola, amigo. Que quiero mucho. Sukoi. Ichiba. Kimochi. Jumi. Yapi. Pudding pudding. Kong bang wa. Today, we had the group practice of Golden Mother because because Golden Mother's birthday the exact birthday is on Monday, the coming Monday. So today, we especially celebrate her birthday ahead of time. And I have said it before, without Golden Mother, there will not be Grandmaster Lu. And without Grandmaster Lu, there would not be True Buddha School. And without True Buddha School, there will not be the Leizhang temples. And no chapters or spiritual centers. And also, there wouldn't be any, there wouldn't be any Tubular School disciples or the Dharma masters, Dharma educators, Dharma teachers, Dharma instructors, Dharma assistants, none of them would exist. So the Golden Mother is the source, the earliest source of Tubular School. Which means, without the Golden Mother, there is nothing. So that is causes and conditions. And today, the fact that we can have to the school, it's all due to the real existence of the Golden Mother. Back then, 
I often talk about the earliest time. Now at the Jit Emperor Temple in Taizong, and someone went there, and it was they were shocked that it was so small. They thought that the Jade Emperor Temple that I went to was really big, like a temple, but that's not the case. It looked like a personal or family altar, very tiny. Therefore, don't think that big temples are necessarily spiritually responsive. Uh, perhaps in big temples there are small bodhisattvas, but in small temples there are big bodhisattvas. It was such a small temple, but it's it was truly uh, truly responsive. It was close to my house then. At that time, it was. Mm. Number 39, Li Xing Road in Taichung. So number 39, at the cooperative new village, cooperative. And behind, that's the map uh, factory. And then, just over, a little bit over, it's the Jit Emperor Temple, very tiny. It's inside a, a, an iron company, a manufacturer, and they in the invited a, a vase to preside over that temple. Because ordained people, Rarely stayed at the just the common temples. So that was causes and conditions, because that place was very close to the, our house. And by coincidence, from Sipi Bu Tang Temple in Hualien, performed ceremony at that temple. They were Jiu Sa, Jiu Ko Sa, Ayako, Alen Ko, or the end, Alen Ko. And Li, a man called Li Tian Si, I think. So these four people were performing some uh, ritual at that temple. So my mother and I went to see it. So at that time, Jiyoko said, Jiyo is Japanese for Qian Dai in Chinese. She said a statement, who is Katsu? And Katsu is my uh, kid's name, my nickname. And when I heard that, I thought maybe that was a mistake. But I was the only one called Katsu, which is the Japanese of Sang Sung. So my Japanese name is Ro Katsuhiko. So she called on my name. And I replied, That's me. Do you need anything? And she said, the Golden Mother is looking for you. And I said, me? Are you sure? I did not know her. How could she know me? 
And she said, you came and she wants you to uh, propagate the Buddha Dharma. And I told her, I did not know anything. And she said, you will know as soon as you kneel down. And I did. Was is it true that I knew as soon as I kneel down? And sure enough, yes. That's how it was. I wrote it in my books, The Golden Mother. She was my first Edom, or main personal deity. And then the first one that I had a vision of was Amitabha Buddha. So Amitabha Buddha became my Yidam too. And the third one that I saw was Siddhigarbha Bodhisattva. So Siddhigarbha Bodhisattva too became my Yidam. So Golden Mother, Amitabha Buddha, and Siddhigarbha Bodhisattva. So the, the three of them became my Yidam. At that time, I was still quite silly and naive, so I made a vow that in the future, if I have attainments, I would go to Golden Mother's place, and I also want to go to the place of Amitabha Buddha and the place of Siddhikarpa Bodhisattva. So how can one person become three? I did not think of that then. But now I know it's not that I just become three. One can become innumerable. So recently, I expound the Vimalakirti Sutra. Once in my earlier books I wrote, you know, the Hiking Kuan Yin or Avalokiteswara Sutra. So that monk gave me a sutra, and when I took a look, in my hand, that was the Hiking Kuan Yin Sutra. So the first sutra that I came into contact, the first Buddhist sutra that I came into contact was the Hiking Kuan Yin Sutra. So I chanted it, and I continue to chant it till today. And then later, I gained some realization, and I wrote it in my books. That the Hiking Kuan Yin Sutra this sutra during the Dong Wei, I uh, I was reincarnated as a monk who transmitted to So Jing De, who was uh, suffering from disaster. And I said, as soon as you complete 1,000 recitation of the sutra, then you would be uh, you would be freed from your prosecution the death life sentence. This person was imprisoned, and in his dream, I transformed into a monk and transmitted the sutra, Hiking Kuan Yin Sutra, to this person, so that he was uh, uh, alleviated from the death sentence from the death sentence. So it was recorded in the Hiking Kuan Yin Sutra. I said I was the one who transmitted it. And recently I've been 
explaining the Vimalakirti Sutra. So Vimalakirti is often with me. And he told me that the hiking Kuan Yin Sutra was transmitted by me, Vimalakirti. By Vimalakirti. So strange. I was surprised. So it, it's Vimalakirti, uh, it's you, Vimalakirti, who transmitted Haikyu Kuan Sutra. But in my books, I wrote that it was me who transmitted it. Grandmaster Lu, me, Grandmaster Lu, who transmitted it. So what's going on here? So it's so strange. So I asked, are you sure? Is there a mistake here? Was it me, Grandmaster Lu, or was it you, Vimalakirti, who transmitted it? So I wanted to clarify it. It must be someone, right, who transmitted to that uh, person. So the monk that appeared in the dream, was it a, a manifestation of Grandmaster Lu or of Vimalakirti? So I asked Vimalakirti, what happened? What was what's going on? So Envy Malakirti told me Grandmaster Lu Do you have an uh, emanated body? And I said yes. Many people have seen it. And Vimalakirti told me, I know your emanated bodies. Like the one living in San Francisco. Dharma brother Gao Ming Lu. He had a sighting with his eyes wide open to oh, see me. Uh, to s he saw me with his eyes wide open, including this uh, monk's bed, monk's bag, this bag. So that was the first one who saw me. And he saw it in the broad daylight with his eyes wide open that I was as tall as two floor, like uh, two floors of a building that tall. And in reality, I'm not very tall. And it's my only regret in my life. But the me, the uh, the me that he saw, was as tall as two second floor. So I was in Seattle, and he was in San Francisco. How could I go there to let him see me? And then there were many more, like the one, the lion head from England, whom you all know. She could also see me. I've written it in my book that I have, I would have a emanated body that would go to your place, and she could feel it. And then a few more. Like the one, like the one in Indonesia. Indonesia. I showed uh, to Maya to see. Maya from Indonesia. And uh, in Taiwan, there's also someone who saw my emanated body. 
บิ่งไหวใส่มาเลเซียมาเลเซีย也有人看到我的分身。There is also someone who saw my body. I will not mention their names. Malaysia, Singapore. We have many disciples from Singapore today. There is also someone in Singapore who saw my emanated body. Many people have seen it, and there are many more in America. And the Yen and the Xi from the Rainbow Temple also had seen them. Man, go and talk to him. You talk loud, speak louder. Can you use the microphone if you have? Yes, I have seen the Shizun. Do you feel the Shizun? You have seen some people have felt, and many more. That's those are emanated bodies. In America, there are many, and all over the world, there are many disciples who have seen. And the Malakirti knows that I have many emanated bodies. So Vimalakirti asked me, "Do I have emanated bodies?" And I said, "Yeah." And I asked him back, "Do you have emanated bodies? Your spiritual cultivation is so high, and your uh, uh, transcendent power is so great." So in the Vimalakirti Sutra, it stated that he. That the Akshobha Buddha, one of the seven Buddhas up here, Vairogana Buddhas to the dragon side, which is to Grandmaster's left. That's Akshobha Buddha. So Abhirati Pure Land. Has the Akshobha Buddha as the chief of the Abhirati Pure Land, and yet we Malakirti move the whole Abhirati Buddha verse, the whole Buddha verse, to the Saha wall, including the Akshobha Buddha. You say this is not big. So how can you imagine how great his transcendent power is? How can you move a Buddha? Is that something easy to move? The one that is able to move the chief of the Abhirati Buddha verse, which is Akshobha Buddha, to the Saha world, was only Vimalakirti. So only Vimalakirti could move Akshobha Buddha and his Buddha verse of pure land to Sahara, so that we can all see what Abhirati Buddha verse is like. So how great! That's how great Vimalakirti is. Of course, he had many emanated bodies. And then he told me. Vimalakirti told me, "Don't think that Grandmaster Lu transmitted the Hiking Kuan Yin Sutra to Sun Jingde because Grandmaster Lu or Sun Yan Lu was an emanation of Vimalakirti." Huh? Huh? Are you sure I am your emanated body? I knew clearly I am Padma Kumara. I came from Amitabha Buddha. I am Amitabha Buddha. 
I am an emanation of Amitabha Buddha. Oh, an emanation of Amitabha Buddha is Padma Kumara. The same with Guru Padma Sambhava, who is also an emanation of Amitabha Buddha. Then, then how come now I am also Vimalakirti? Are you sure you are not wrong? So I am an emanation of Amitabha Buddha as well as an emanation of Vimalakirti? How come there are two? So I asked him. You know what Vimalakirti said? Do you know that Avalokiteswara Bodhisattva has countless myriad emanations? He exists in all the realms, all worlds. If you read the Universal Gate Sutra of the Lotus Sutra of Avalokiteswara, is there Avalokiteswara in the Western realm? Yes. Amitabha Buddha, Avalokiteswara Bodhisattva, and Mahasthama Bodhisattva are referred to as the Trinity of the West, or the three main reliances of Sukhavati. And by cultivating them, you can go to Sukhavati. But do you know what Vimalakirti taught me? That at the uh, Lapis Lazuli realm of, Ami of Medicine Buddha, above me, the, the seven Buddhas. There's also Medicine Buddha, Sakyamuni Buddha, on top of the five Dhyani Buddhas. So, of the seven Buddhas, Sakyamuni and Buddha and Medicine Buddha are here. So, I'll look at this one, Bodhisattva, and Mahasthama Prabhupada Bodhisattva are also the red view of the Medicine Buddha. Of the eight great bodhisattvas, the Avalokiteswara, Mahasthama, Prabhupada Bodhisattva, the Sunlight Radiance Bodhisattva, Moonlight Radiance Bodhisattva, Medicine King Bodhisattva, Supreme Medicine Bodhisattva, Bhautan and Chang Jing Jing, the Ever Diligent Buddha. So the Medicine Buddha has this eight primary. Uh, Bodhisattvas in his assembly, Bao Tan Xiang, and Chang Jing Jing Pusa, and then Master Prabhu Lokiteswara, Medicine King, Bodhisattva, Supreme Medicine Bodhisattva, Sunlight Radiance Bodhisattva, Moonlight Radiance Bodhisattva. So, how? Avalokiteswara and Mahasana Prabhupada Bodhisattvas belong to the Western realm of Sukhavati, but they are also part of the retinue of the Medicine Buddha. That's why I was emanated from Amitabha Buddha's Padmakumara, but also the Benson. An emanation of Vimalakirti. That's quite strange. That's why I have many questions about emanated bodies. I will ask Vimalakirti in the future. So how do these people see Grandmaster's emanated bodies? Let me tell you, when they work, they will not feel that I am there. But as soon as they concentrate, and chant Grandmaster Lu's mantra, 
and they think of Grandmaster's form, then immediately I would be there. Immediately. So you don't usually notice the issues on emanated bodies. You just do your work. Like the lion head from England. You all know her, right? She works as a Chinese medical doctor and seeing patients at the clinic. So because she focused on that, she did not, she does not feel it. But any time she thinks of Grandmaster Lu and chants Om Guru Lian Sung Siti Hong, immediately I would appear. That's the phenomena. And I will ask Vimalakirti many more issues about emanated body. There are many strange things. Since I am an emanation of Amitabha Buddha, which is Padma Kumara, it turns out that I'm also an emanation of Vimalakirti. So therefore, as soon as I read the Hiking Kuan Yin Sutra, I found it very familiar, and I chant it all the time. Every day I chant it. It's my sutra. I'm, I was the one who transmitted it. And how could it be Vimalakirti? And it turned out I came from Vimalakirti. That's why I'm expounding on the Vimalakirti Sutra. And he approved that you can expound it. And what you will expound or <coughs> your exposition would be different from other people's. Therefore, the book that I'm writing now is called wow, Vimalakirti, the great master with transcendent power. Book number 292. Uh, and in this book, it's all about the dialogues and uh, the dynamics I have with Vimalakirti and because I'm expounding on Vimalakirti Sutra. So what do you say? Isn't that strange? Isn't that amazing? <sighs> the three wheel the three wheel car is running fast. Sitting on it, there's a little old lady and asking for fifty cents and was given a dollar. Do you think it's a strange? Nothing strange about it because the the cart uh, driver was the old lady's uh, boyfriend. So there are reasons behind it. Many things like that. So let me share a joke. The girlfriend said, Honey, my tummy is getting bigger and bigger now. Am I getting pregnant? And the boyfriend replied, Oh, I know who's the dad is. And the girlfriend asked, Who? And the boyfriend said, McDonald's. Huh? Kentucky Fried Chicken. Napoli Pizza. Domino. Coca Cola and the fried chicken. So the reasons, because she ate too much, not that she's 
carrying a baby. So therefore, we have to find out the reason. Someone asked the great master, I want to understand the philosophy of life. And the master replied, human life is like calling on the phone. If it's not you that hangs up first, they hang up first, I hang up first. And then that young man replied, then you hang up first. Life philosophy. So either you hang up first, I or I hang up first. That's also life philosophy. At the end, everybody hangs up or die. Is there anyone that can stay? None. Since the ancient time, all spiritual cultivators, uh, saints and the virtuous people, sages, uh, all would comply to that. So think about it. It's either you hang up first, or either you die first, or I die first. There's nothing to to haggle about, or to nitpick about. So first, clean up your anger and aggression first. So, Akshoba Buddha, the immovable Buddha, is the chief deity in the Abhirati Buddha verse. And he made, a, he generated a vow for lives after lives to never get angry, never lose a temper. That's the fundamental vow of the Akshoba Buddha. Uh, there is no fire of anger at all, absolutely never. That's the vow of Akshoba Buddha, of Abhirati, pure Buddha verse, pure land. One day, uh, uh, a salesman uh, <coughs> rang a doorbell and, oh, madam, I have this book that called the 500 excuses for husband to come home late. You have to buy it. And the lady said, why? And and he replied, oh, because I just sold one to your husband. So the salesman was very good. So today, we will talk about uh, upon all beings as the most marvelous sound ever heard. When the great Bodhisattvas gave Dharma teachings, the Dharma that they spoke were truly marvelous and can touch the hearts of the people. And their voices are truly marvelous. So in, <coughs> including their voices are truly marvelous 
and the contents also marvelous. So, by listening to the uh, to the teaching about Grandmaster Lu and Vimalakirti, don't you find it truly sublime and marvelous? So this is teaching you to to fathom or to feel that the dharmas, the Buddha Dharma of the great Bodhisattvas are truly marvelous and sublime. That the voice of the great Bodhisattvas entering into your ears you would feel like when you hear the sutra explanation of the old monk or those on television. They are very dry. They don't smile or laugh. And they don't say anything sublime or marvelous. They just follow they just read the sutra and maybe give simple explanations. And listening to them, everyone would uh, fall asleep, including the person who's speaking. So if the speaker is falling asleep, the listeners even more so. However, when the great Bodhisattvas is giving a sutra exposition, it's like the joke when the teacher is teaching and Xiaoming is falling asleep. So the teacher asked Xiaoming to stand up. So were you falling asleep when I was uh, teaching? And Xiaoming replied, no. No. Then why did you close your eyes? When I was when I when I was teaching, you close your eyes. Also, because I'm think I'm listening with my heart and I'm contemplating. That's why I close my eyes. Because. You spoke really well, and by listening carefully, I'm mulling it over in my mind. That's why I close my eyes. Then why are you nodding as your eyes are closed, were closed? Shami replied, because it was correct, it was right. And not only that, you drool too. Because it's very, very enticing, very tasteful. I mean, that's why I drooled. So that's how marvelous a Dharma teaching is. How, like when Grandmaster is giving Dharma teaching, I have sang a song. Uh, let me sing a song for you now. It's a children's song, the old pine tree. I am an old spiritual cultivator. Every day I am very diligent. I am not afraid of the demonic obstruction, and I am not afraid of the wandering ghosts and spirits. I am standing in between heaven and earth, and there is only me, the spiritual cultivator. See?
I sing a song too. Ogan 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 Sui Tang says Ogan Wosang Tuzi Sani Her Tang. I also sing the song. So, who la Jiao Bai Guang Yogo la Suzi Her Hua Yang Xiang Sen Ni Wan Sen Sui Zong Yang. 我想之于而在你和他。I'm like a little fish in your lotus pond, and together with you, we are uh, watching the white moon. And even season upon season, the lotus stays fragrant and waiting for you to play in the water. So this is also a Buddhist song, you know. I am, I am wishing that all the pure lotus blossoms bloom in all the lotus ponds, that the lotus is always fragrant across all seasons. So giving Dharma teaching should be like the fragrant lotus radiating perfume scent all over. So in my Dharma teaching, I also sing. When I'm thinking of you, you're in the sky. When I'm thinking of you again, you're in front of you. When I'm thinking of you again, you're in my br- in my brain. When I think of you, you're in my heart, in the field of my heart. So let me tell you, this is also a Buddhist song. It's not a love song. That's about visualization. When you visualize your yida. First, when you think of you, you're in the sky. And when I think of you, you're in front of me. When I think of you, you're in my brain. When I think of you, you're in the field of my heart. So that's a Buddhist song. What else? So that's upon all beings as the most marvelous sound ever heard. The great Bodhisattvas can't be seated on the Dharma throne and everything is dead, everybody is asleep. You need to sing, you need to tell jokes. That's marvelous sound. That's the most marvelous song. Even love songs can become Buddha Dharma. Right? See? <laughs> The weeds, the oils, the rice, the salt, the tea, uh, bits by bits, drops by drops, having you all, that's happiness. As soon as you're here, nothing will go wrong. That's not a love song, that's a Buddhist song. Uh, so, uh, the firewoods, the oil, the rice, the salt, the sauce, the tea. So, spiritual cultivators need to earn money so that they can cultivate spiritually. Without money, you cannot cultivate spiritually. Firewoods, oh, rice, soy salt, and tea.
Amid this, you are happy. So as long as you have all those uh, daily necessities, then your Buddhist practice will will not go wrong. So it's a Buddhist word. I mean, that's a Buddhist song. So that's called upon all beings as the most marvelous sound ever heard. So you need to be able to express it, to touch the hearts of people. Then that would be the most marvelous one. So it's 10. It's 10. 20 now? It's time to call it off. So that's all for today. So it's the most marvelous sound ever heard. That really is true. You need to give Dharma teachings this way so that people can listen. Oh, money, baby, home.